Hi, welcome to Cat Cooks. This is the first episode of my new vlog, which is going to be completely about food and baking and cooking. Um, if you've been following my previous vlog, which is going to continue um, on this uh, same channel, you'll know that food has come into it quite often. So much so that I kind of felt like I wanted to make it its own thing and do a separate vlog just about cooking. Um, so that's what I'm doing now. Um, I've got a food related task that is long overdue today, which is sorting through, I call it the spice audit, <laughs> which is sorting through my herbs and spices that I keep here um, and seeing what's running low and what I need to uh, stock up on. So I'm going to do that um, for the first episode of this blog and also talk a little bit about my relationship with food and cooking because I haven't always been that interested in food. Um, it's definitely something I came to love a little bit later in life. I grew up in the UK and I don't quite know how to put this because I don't want to offend anyone, but I um, there's no real food that's considered traditionally English that I really love or enjoy. Um, and growing up, I was quite a fussy eater. I mean, my, my poor mum probably had a hard time trying to keep me happy with regards to food. Um, but I think what happened later in life, um, when I met my current partner, Sergio, um, who's he's a real foodie and he comes from Mexico where there's a real um, culture of appreciation of food, um, which kind of runs very deep, I think. And he's also a great cook himself. He's got a really great palate, I think much better than mine. Um, and he's one of these people that can instinctively put things together and make a meal, which I still, you know, I'm, I still don't have quite that confidence. But um, I think through him and his love of food, um, I've learned to become quite a good cook. And I'm hoping to kind of share some of that enthusiasm on this vlog. And also, I'm hoping to do lots of kind of more food related stuff in my illustration work. I'm an illustrator and a writer and an artist um, and I'd like to kind of get into illustrating recipes more uh, and making some little books and zines and things about food so hopefully that's all going to be tied together with this vlog. So yeah going back to my kind of history with food, um, so when I was younger I was a vegetarian for a good number of years. Um, I have a funny relationship with eating meat, I do eat meat now, not super frequently like maybe once or twice a week um, but it's never been my favourite thing. If I think of any kind of meat dish with something on the side, it's usually whatever's on the side that I'm much more interested in eating. Um, when I got back into eating meat, it was when I was traveling in Mexico when I was 24. I was traveling in Mexico and Central America and I started to find it really hard to kind of find vegetarian foods to eat there. People always say that Mexico is quite a good country um, to travel in as a vegetarian because they eat a lot of beans and cheese and rice and stuff. but they don't really eat that stuff on its own. That's usually an accompaniment to meat um, more often than not. So while I was traveling there, I traveled for nine months um, on a very, very tight budget. And I started to really notice that if I had a kind of meat dish as one of my meals of the day, that that would sustain me and carry me through energy wise a lot better than if I didn't. So for that reason, while I was traveling on such a tight budget, I started to eat meat again and I have continued it through to this day um, just in terms of my kind of health it seems to work for me to have as, as mixed a diet as possible there's not really very much that I don't eat um, and I'm also not a nutritionist so I'm not going to make any kind of pretense that I understand a lot about nutrition so uh, don't look to me for that kind of thing um, my interest in food is just like delicious flavors and the enjoyment of kind of learning about new ingredients and new dishes and ways to put things together and ways to cook things so yeah my focus is really on flavors and taste and not very much to do with nutrition although it does come into it obviously in terms of what I usually cook I'd say recently I probably cook more Asian food of different kinds than anything else. Um, I have a lot of recipes that are Japanese, Indian, um, Indonesian, Vietnamese, uh, Chinese. There's an awful lot from that continent that I really, really love. Um, so yeah, definitely at the moment I'm cooking a lot of Asian food. I also cook a little bit of Italian. Italian food is one of my favorite things in the world. One thing that always makes me a little bit sad is when people say they can't cook or that they 
they're scared of a particular type of cooking or of baking or something like that. Um, I think it's a real shame if people don't cook. And so what I'd like to kind of, with this vlog, I'd like to kind of show some of the things that I do that are really simple to begin with. I'd also love to produce at some point a collection of recipes that I consider to be some of the easiest things that I make um, that are still really, really delicious, as well as doing some more kind of involved and complicated things. I love baking and uh, a couple of years ago I got really into doing puff pastry and things like that from scratch which is never when you're busy that's never a thing that you kind of take on very lightly but um, I'm gonna I'm looking forward to doing things like that for the vlog because it will give me an excuse to do them and kind of share the frustrations and the learning process with you guys as well. I also love gardening which you'll know if you've seen my main vlog. I don't grow a huge amount of edible stuff. Um, this last year I've grown cucumbers uh, for the first time and the year before tomatoes, chilies. It's always just a couple of things, but I am looking to get more into that. To me, there's nothing more exciting than kind of looking at ingredients and finding out how they grew and how they grow, what type of plant it is and that kind of thing. And thinking about whether it's possibly something that I might be able to grow myself one day. So that's another thing I'm going to be kind of looking into as well. So now I'm going to get started on this um, spice organising that I'm going to do. Anyone that cooks quite a lot of Indian food soon finds that their quantities of spices get a little bit out of hand. Um, so at one point I really wanted a way to organise it. And I had all these little jars, but I wanted something that would fit inside a cupboard that would have different levels where I could keep everything quite um, organised and it would take up less space. And I found this, I think it's an Ikea... I think it's for organising letters or something, and it had four little drawers. I, I take two out so that um, the height can fit my little jars. Um, but it's really convenient, it's really handy to just be able to kind of pull a shelf out like that and kind of see what I have. I now don't keep it in the cupboard anymore just because um, I found that it fits in this little corner quite nicely but it's definitely a good way to kind of keep everything together. This is a new thing. This was given to me by my friend Rupa, um, and it's black salt, which I haven't yet used. Um, I need to look into its uses more, but it has a really, it kind of smells sulfury, which is quite interesting. Um, and I can't wait to kind of figure out what I'm gonna do with this. That doesn't have a jar of its own yet. So when I do cook with these, I tend to take the drawers out completely and just collect up what I know I'm going to need, put it in the kitchen, and then it's ready to use. And this right here is my overflow section. <laughs> um, so this contains um, spices that there's too much in a bag to kind of put in one jar initially, so I'll keep kind of half of it in the bag to refill later. But there's also just, I've got too much stuff. I don't have enough of these jars. Um, so I'll have to think about whether I can maybe add another level or something at some point. So straight away, fenugreek. I don't think I have any more of that. No, I definitely don't. That's going to go on my list um, as one that I need to stock up on. Another thing I might do, there's some stuff here that I've really not used very often and it's probably quite old now anyway. This is a fish biryani kind of pre-mixed spice mix and I could empty some of these jars out. They're quite old and I haven't used them in ages anyway to make room for some of this stuff. That might be a good idea. I'm going to put some jars aside for that possibility. Fennel seeds. Black pepper I keep separately because um, that's in a place where I can grab it every time I cook. I use it pretty much for everything, so that's in its own section in the kitchen. But it's good to know that I have some of that spare. Cinnamon quills. I don't have any more fennel seed, but it's not something I use that often, so I'm not going to re restock on it right now. This looks quite empty, but this is hot madras curry powder, which is incredibly hot, so you don't need a lot of it um, for any one dish. So I'm not going to restock that. Mm -hmm. 
when I've got a full list of the things that I need to stock up on, um, I'm popping out to the shops in a minute, so I'll take the camera along um, and show you where I buy most of my spices. I've got to show you this. This is my mystery spice, <laughs> which is an unlabeled jar that I have no recollection of what this is um, or why it wasn't kind of labeled at the same time as everything else. To me, it smells like cinnamon, but I have a cinnamon jar. I don't know if they're the same, why I would have put cinnamon in here. I don't know if it's a spice mix that just contains a lot of cinnamon. I feel like I don't have an amazing sense of smell, which could be a disadvantage for someone that's into cooking. Got some oregano I can restock here. These I think have probably come from my friend Rupert in the past when we do cooking together. This is Ajwan, which I've labeled. This bag is unlabeled. So I actually don't know what this is either. It's, I really appreciate my friend Rupert when it comes to cooking. It's something we're both really into and we get together quite often and do um, what we call South London Curry Club, where we cook a lot of Indian recipes together. Um, and so things like this where she'll bring me a little bit of a particular spice that I've not been able to get in my local area is so nice. Um, I really, really appreciate it. Um, and recently I had a bunch of Mexican ingredients delivered to her house as a kind of thank you for her being supportive of me through working on my last graphic novel that I was drawing. Um, so yeah, it's kind of cool when you, it's kind of really nice if you've got a friend where you can kind of compare notes and swap ingredients that you're really into and kind of try things together and kind of also ask each other for help. She recently did puff pastry for the first time, which was a challenge she's vegan so she was using kind of vegan butter um, but she was kind of in touch throughout the day on that day asking me questions and then I'll equally I was in touch with her on another day asking questions about something else so it's really really nice if you find someone that can kind of um, you can kind of swap information and things with and also when we do get together and cook together which we don't do so much now that um, in fact, we haven't done for ages because of the lockdown and everything. Um, it actually gives you an opportunity to do recipes and things that you you usually avoid because there's so much work for one person. But you find if you if there's two of you, it goes a lot faster. Um, the things that are usually boring, like chopping loads and loads of vegetables, is kind of fun because you've got someone to talk to. I've got a brand new cinnamon powder here that I haven't even opened. It's going everywhere. <laughs> it's clouds of cinnamon. I don't know if the camera's picking that up. I can just, just put the whole bag in there. That's why these um, slightly larger jars are a bit better. I don't know what the exact size of these are, but they're a good size if you buy this kind of size of, of spice packet. So the only one I think I might need to stock up on is coriander powder because that's another one that I use quite often. So I've now got one, two, three, five little um, bags here that I don't have jars for, but I've identified two jars that I might just empty out because I don't really use them. And then I can get some of these put away. I'll have to remember to relabel them so I don't wind up with my mystery <laughs> spice situation again. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much everything sorted for now and there's three things I need to buy when I pop out to the shops in a minute.
So I've been to the shops, I've restocked the spices that I needed to buy there in this cupboard now. Um, I've got a couple of jars that have been washed. Um, they just need to dry before I put spices in them. Um, for dinner this evening, I'm making udon with tofu. Um, my local Sainsbury's, which is a really small supermarket, um, it's like a local version of the big supermarket, have recently started stocking these um, packet udon, which are brilliant. So this is what I'm making, super easy, um, one pack per person. And you just need to kind of pour boiling water on these for three minutes and they're kind of ready to be fried in the pan with the rest of the ingredients. Over here I have tofu that's cubed, um, it's just being pressed at the moment. Um, and all I usually do is toss it in a little bit of flour before I fry it, so I'm going to get on with that now. I'm also going to get a few sesame seeds toasting in a dry pan just to sprinkle on at the end, but I kind of like to get them done early on so that I don't forget about them and then have a panic at the end. So there's my tofu, I don't know if you can see, but I've cut it into cubes and now I'm going to just um, toss it in some flour and a little salt before I fry it. When it comes to sort of frying all the ingredients together at the end for the udon fried noodles, I'm going to use a wok. but. To pre-fry the tofu, I'm going to use my frying pan just because with a flat base, you can kind of get more coverage, get the pieces kind of nicely sitting in oil and cooking evenly. So another thing I'm going to get ready now is a bowl with just a little kitchen roll in it to drain the tofu when it comes out of the pan because it will be quite oily. And I've made a start on the spring onions. I'm going to do the pak choy as well, get it all ready so that it's ready to kind of all fry up together at the end. Just going to turn the tofu now. And then I'll get the um, noodles cooked so that they can just be ready to go. Um, so as I said, I cook them by just pouring boiling water on, leaving for three minutes, and then I rinse them in cold water to stop them cooking any further. These also kind of come quite clumped together. So I use a spaghetti scoop to kind of gently as they cook in the boiling water, really gently separate them. If you do it too roughly, they kind of fall apart. So you may have noticed just now while I was talking to my uh, housemate that I drizzled a little bit of sesame oil over the noodles and mixed it through the cooked noodles and that's just to stop them sticking. Uh, once they're cooked they can kind of end up in glued together if you leave them. So I've got my toasted sesame seeds, I've got my tofu here that's ready cooked. Just got to prepare the um, spring onions and the pak choy. Um, and then it'll all be stir fried together with a little bit of sauce that I'm going to make in a minute using soy, 
a little bit of vinegar, uh, Sichuan pepper, and a few other bits. I have to remind myself what goes into that in a minute. And this is probably quite obvious to some of you, but maybe not everyone, but with pak choy, um, I tend to cut it off about here, separate the white from the leaf. Um, and then I cut the white part into sort of chunky shapes um, and then more finely shred the green part and just chuck that in right at the end so that it barely kind of cooks. Um, but the white part needs a little bit more time. And now I'm at the stage where I've prepared all the ingredients ready to stir fry. So I'm going to take the camera over and show you what's all organized over there and ready to go in the pan. Um, the wok is heating up over here and then I'm going to just chuck it all in in a particular order and it will just take a few minutes and be done. All right, so ready to go in is pre-cooked noodles, pre-cooked tofu, my toasted sesame seeds. Um, here we have the spring onion and um, the whites of the pak choy. Here's the green of the pak choy. Here's my um, little bit of ginger and garlic. Most of the ginger and garlic has gone into this sauce here, so it's going to go in kind of raw in the sauce and then cook together. But I kind of like reserving a little bit to chuck in right at the start with the onion and the uh, whites of the pak choy. And then I've got um, some chili flakes in case it's not kind of spicy enough, some Sichuan pepper, which I'll chuck on at the end, and some extra salt to throw on if I need it. Onion and pak choy first. Um, after those have had a little chance to brown slightly, um, I'll stir through the ginger and garlic. Um, then I'll chuck in probably the udon, the tofu, let it all reheat together, um, stir through the sauce, and then finally at the end, um, I'll put the green parts of the pak choy in and then sprinkle the sesame over the top at the end when it's ready to serve along with the Sichuan pepper. And I will taste it while it's still in the pan just to see with the seasoning whether it needs any more salt or anything. One quite important thing that I've learned is to when you first throw in these uh, spring onions is just to not move them for a few minutes because that's the only way you'll get a kind of slightly charred side on them before you start stirring them around and cooking them through. There's the charring that you want. It's pretty much done now, I just need to test for seasoning. Thank you. 